Yeah. Welcome. That's it. To the stunner. Ah, oh, that's right. It's supposed to be the stretcher. So I got to stick the stunner shades off. I got to take the seatbelt off. And we got to get moving to the stretch exercises that we have in store for you. So hopefully you enjoyed that introduction. I am your host, Jesse Swear, nationally recognized inclusive fitness trainer, silver sneaker flex instructor. And you can find out more about me by visiting my website at www.jessieswear.com. Now, phone to find me in the worldwide across the globe, silver sneaker members, new members, YouTube subscribers, those Facebook live streamers. What do we have today? We have another stretcher class. It's not the stunner class. And we're going to be working on some more hand exercises. Now, why do we want to do more hand exercises? Well, some of us over the journey of life or this game called life, we have trauma in those hands. Not only do we have trauma in those hands, we have some overuse in those hands or we have some injury because we use them, right? For everything. Think about it. We have our Twitter fingers, right? Where we just say whatever we want to say and there is no consequences to that. We all do it. Well, some of us do it. I don't do it. We get on Facebook and we scroll through, right? Not only do we impact our necks, but we're impacting our hands. And now everything is really computer dominant. So we use those hands for the computer, the remote control, uh, the Playstations, the Xboxes, you name it. We have some overuse, injury, trauma to those hands. And as we age, we might get something called arthritis, right? Where it's either rheumatoid or osteoarthritis and we get the dull, achy, maybe discomforting pain. We lose some of that grip strength. We lose some of that dexterity. We lose some of that elastic ability to be able to move those fingers in different positions. And we even get nodulars at times, maybe from gout, maybe from uh, the rheumatoid arthritis where it impacts our mobility. So we want to work on getting the blood and oxygen to the wrist, to those fingers, to those metacarpals as well. And it's all done here on this station, on this channel with me, the stunt show with those sunglasses, or you can do it in the nice sun show and get this stretcher exercise in. We're going to do a variety of different stretches for those hands and those fingers to try to alleviate some of that discomfort, some of that pain, and have more tolerance throughout your day with arthritis or just overuse or trauma from the overutilization of our hands. Now, without further ado, you know who's here. Chicka chicka, the style profile, wheel deal, shake a big and moving and grooving. Ah, I got the pink sweatshirt wearing. I'm in the car rocking, high flying, no limousine riding, but I'm styling and I'm profiling with you on this routine. Now, there's a few things. If you have any lightheadedness, pain, dizziness, discomfort, or fatigue, hit the pause, come back a little bit later. The other thing we need to go over, we need to go over the virtual five. You should always consult with your physician before engaging in any physical activity program by participating in this online exercise with me. You assume all dangerous hazard risks of such participation. Exercise is demonstrated by the instructor in this online class. Can be demanding. If you're unable to safely perform these exercises again, please modify them or choose a different set of exercises. Number two, if you're at home or you possibly might be doing this in your car like I am, make sure you sit up on the edge of that chair if you do have your seatbelt on you want to take it off i know i had it on initially and you want to kind of sit up you want your chest out shoulders up back and down tuck the belly tuck the tailbone ears over the shoulders elongate and lengthen that spine again if you're in that seat edge of the chair if you're in your car it's a little hard to do that if you're standing anchor those feet toes over knees knees over hips hips over shoulders and again tuck the belly tuck the tailbone chest out shoulders up back and down ears over the shoulders and again lengthen and elongate that spine and you're really just working on good posture being able to shift your weight left to right and find that center of gravity and be in a nice comfortable position as you do these exercises if you're in that seated position you want to kind of rest your hands on your thighs you don't want to kind of hold them up um you can rest the elbows into the rib cage as well because we want to take the pressure off the shoulders because we are working on those hands and the more you use those shoulders to hold those hands up or those wrists up you're putting more strain on those wrists because it's all connected through the glenohumeral joint and the insertion point at the shoulder no matter if you're using your wrist or you're using the hinge at the elbow the other thing is three you want to breathe inhale exhale four pay attention to rate of perceived exertion it is a one through three scale today because we're not really overexerting. you're relaxed you're confident you're doing this in your home 
in the office, in your vehicle, just make sure you're not moving. You know, we don't want no cop pulling us over while we're doing this episode with you. And then number two, um, you're starting to breathe a little bit more. You're starting to feel those fingers move a little bit more. You're getting the blood flowing, the oxygen flowing into that cartilage, which the only way to do that is through movement. Um, and then you get to that three and you roar exert and you're getting a little hot. Get the window down if you're in your car, turn the AC on, turn the music up, and then just kind of relax and rock out to what I have to offer. And then you get to, uh, I guess, where we're at. We get to number five, get your hydration on. So I got my hydration on. I've been drinking a lot this morning, but I've been up since about 3.30 this morning. And we're bringing this to you as I'm not really sure what time it is, but you can tell it's nice out. And we're going to enjoy this weather, and hopefully you enjoy this exercise class as well. So I'm going to take my left hand initially, right? And I'm just going to lift it up right in front. Elbow again is tucked into that rib cage. And I just want you to be able to see this hand right here, right? You see the left hand? You can do this on the right hand too. Unilateral exercises, bilateral exercises with me both hands. But because of my screen time, I'm just going to do unilateral exercises so that you can see. So the left hand's up. It's nice and wide, so I'm really stretching this hand. It's like a web, right? I'm creating a web. I'm extending those fingers. I'm trying to spread them out as far as I can, but without any assistance, elbows tucked. And then I'm going to kind of squeeze, do a tendon glide, right? See, I, I just tendon glide them down. Squeeze the fist, feeling it in the forearms, and then I'm going to just explode out. Really go into that web. And then I'm going to tendon glide down, squeeze the fist, as you can see the fist squeeze, and then I'm going to explode out. So again, I'm doing a variety of exercises right here to really help with that arthritis to get that blood and oxygen flowing. And again, my elbow is locked into that rib cage or on my thigh. Now you can do it this way as well, where you're just kind of really uh, being in the neutral state and I have my fingers spread and then I'm tending gliding down, right? You can see the tending glide a little better from that direction. And then I'm squeezing that fist and then I'm exploding. Good. So I can go again, turn to neutral position, tend and glide down, squeeze the fist as tight as you can, keeping it nice in that neutral position, not cocking the wrist at all, and then opening it up with a nice turn to get a little more extension of those fingers to get that webbing open a little farther. Blood and oxygen flowing. Turn it into that neutral position again. Tend and glide down. Squeeze that fist. Again, no cocking or rocking it. And then open it up nice and wide. Now we want to go to the other side as well. So if you have that ability, you want to do both sides. That was the left side. We want to go to this right side now. So the right side's up in front of me. Elbows into the rib cage or on my thigh. And I'm going to just do a tendon glide. I'm going to squeeze that fist and then I'm going to just open it up nice and wide as far as I can. Now, you're going to have one hand probably that you can open up a little wider and that you're going to feel that on that forearm or that wrist a little bit more because that's probably your more dominant hand. So again, if I go neutral and I do a tendon glide, you can see those tendon glides a little better there. Squeeze that fist and then you can open it up that way. You can open it up this way, however you want to do it. A tendon glide down, squeeze that fist and a nice good extension, nice and wide. So I know with that left side that I was demonstrating with you, I get a little wider with the hand. I do a little bit of better job with that hand. And tendon glide down, squeeze that fist, and then open it up nice and wide. Again, elbows into that rib cage, tendon glide down, squeeze the fist, open it up nice and wide. Now if I go to that neutral state, do the same thing. Again, I'm trying to get that blood, trying to get the oxygen. I'm trying to take away that dull, achy feeling. A lot of times we get that dull, achy feeling maybe in our fingers. We lose that sensory. Or a lot of times for me, I get it in my shoulders from some overuse, some trauma, some injury. And tendon glide, squeeze, and open. Nice and wide. Try to really take those fingers nice and wide. So again, tendon glide, squeeze, open. Again, it's a variety of hand exercises to get blood and oxygen flowing to the cartilage and get those muscles energized so that you can assist with the onset of aging, be pro-aging, and help with arthritis as well. You're stunting here today with me. 
You just don't have the sunglasses on. Some of you might have the sunglasses on. So now we did both sides there. So now the goal would be doing bilateral. I'm going to let that up to you just because of screen time. We can't really get both hands in here and do the screen. And we want to move to that next exercise. So that was a little bit of tenon glides. That was um, a little bit of a fist squeeze. And then that was a nice extension of a web of getting those fingers nice and extended through. So the next one I want to do is I want to turn like I have a motorcycle. So I'm going to just flex it down. There you go, and extend back. Flex down, extend back. So side view, like here, left hand, and back. Again, we're working that wrist, and you can hold that wrist if you want. Rev that engine, and loosen up and get the blood and oxygen flown here as well. Now we want to go to the other side, and you want to do that right side, and it's the same pattern of movement. Again, this assists with something called carpal tunnel. Now think about what we do with our wrists and our shoulders and our hands throughout the day as we are on those computers or on uh, the television or on uh, the PlayStation. Again, there's overuse, there's trauma, and there's injury that occurs, and what we're trying to really do right here, again, is get that oxygen, that blood flowing, and you're trying to work on getting some hypertrophy back into this wrist region so you get some strength back in here and you get that flood, that, that blood flowing into this region. A lot of times what happens is you get pinched nerves because of the position it's in, and then you get atrophy that surrounds that area, and then you don't have the ability or the mobility or the stability anymore and then you lose that sensory or your hands go numb or you get that dull achy feeling so you want to be able to put those fists together just like this and then just take them up and down and i'm trying to get them for their eagle here but it, it's a little difficult in the in the vehicle and just down and up or you can face them fist bumping me right and up and down like this. So this becomes the bilateral exercise of this routine where you got your hands on their handlebars and that motorcycle, elbows, right? You ever see those motorcycle guys riding it? Like they're off screen, right? Mine are on screen. And you're just, you got the little moped, the little Vespa right now. Zoom, 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 right? Instead of that big Harley. Well, I can't make those noises. So again, you want to work on those wrists. You want to work on those fingers and it is a daily task, right? Because you're using those hands on a daily. So you want to be able to stretch those hands and get that blood flowing to that oxygen and oxygen to the cartilage. And the only way to do that is through movement. So if you don't move them and you don't use them and you have dull, achy discomfort, you have trauma, you have injury to any of those areas, wrists, shoulders, fingers, it's going to be detrimental to you. So you want to continue to do exercises like this. The other exercise that you want to do as well is the exercise of just taking those fingertips and putting them together, right? And squeezing those fingertips together just like this. So this is a, another a bilateral exercise. And I'm pushing together isometrically so that I feel the sensory on all those fingers and I'm pushing them and then I'm kind of look closing out and doing that palm stretch. So I know we've done some palm stretches as well. So we're kind of throwing it all together today with some of those exercises that we've been teaching and you just move it back out. So now I know some of you might be at home and you're saying, listen, Jesse, I do have an injury. I had an ischemic stroke or CVA and I have lost the ability to move one side of my body, right? So then what do I do? How do I do that, right? Well, what I would suggest is you get a wall or you use your leg and you do similar exercises just like this. So if I was using my chest right here like this, I'd be pushing on my chest, right? And you can see the gap in between my fingers. And then I would just kind of straighten it out. And then I would just roll it up through. Like I'm gripping and I'm pinching myself on my chest. And then I would just walk them out, flatten it out, 
right? Almost like you're flattening the fascia out like you do on your foot where you get that plantar fasciitis and then you bring it back up and you squeeze them together just like this. So you can see I'm squeezing or I'm kind of walking them out. Squeezing or I'm walking them out. So you could do it that way or you could do it where you're doing your chest or your leg or a wall and you're kind of just walking them through and it's just kind of like a walk through and a stretch or you can put them together just like this. Right, create a web, do that palm stretch, bring them back. There you go. And I'm trying to get them centered out so you can see as I gum and I do them. So they could look like this as well. As I try to show you a different angle. And I'm really working those fingers and I can really feel those wrists and I know that blood's flowing. And the other thing is, I'm getting tendon glides as well. When I do that, as those fingers come in, there's a tendon glide there. And as they spread out, they're extending and they're creating that web and the blood's flowing, not only through the wrists, through the shoulders, but through those fingers as well. And we wanna be able to do that. And then you wanna do their jazz fusion, little fingers, you just wanna kinda of move them. You can do one side, right, up and down, just getting that blood flowing. Other side, there you go. You can do them both. You can do some opposition as well. This would be your opposition. You can just do one hand. We walked through this before and you're just kind of getting that nice good squeeze and you're pulling through and you're squeezing. So again, a variety of exercises that you can do to improve the dull achy feeling, the discomfort you might have, the pain you might have, the sensory issues that you might have from overuse, from trauma, from injury, from the aging process, or just maybe being diagnosed with something called arthritis, no matter if it's rheumatoid or osteoarthritis. There are many different exercises you can do from the tendon glide to squeeze the fist, to explode them open nice and wide and fully extend them as I do one hand again, tendon glide, squeeze that fist, open them nice and wide, tendon glide, squeeze that fist, open them nice and wide, two, the motorcycle, ride the Vespa, just getting that wrist moving, flexing them up and down. You got it, just like that, to putting them together, creating that web, pushing isometrically, in, keeping them wide, bringing them back, nice good squeeze. Try to get in that camera angle, push them out, bring them back, nice and wide, that palm stretch, or by pinching your chest, squeezing the chest, open them up, walking them out, and going nice and wide. You can always press down with the other hand if you have the availability. If you don't, that's okay as well. Squeezing, pinching that chest, walk them out nice and wide. You're creating that nice web, you're squeezing, that fist wide like this or some opposition as well to finish it off and to finish this scenario off. Hydrate, pay attention to rate of perceived exertion and do these on a daily basis. And guess what? The stunt man is out. Peace, my friends. I'll be back for another episode another time.